All right, what's up, guys? Fallen Winter here, and we are doing a deck profile for um, the Silverthorn deck with Luke Air and stuff. Um, pretty much with just all the new Fighters Collection support that they've got, which helps drastically, in my opinion. Uh, so we're starting off with zeros. Your starting Vanguard is the Silverthorn Beast Tamer Mill. Her skill is put her into soul. Uh, no cost or anything, you can activate her on the turn you ride grade 1 if you really wanted to. Check top 5 cards, choose up to a grade 1, grade 2, and grade 3 card with Silverthorn in its name, and put them into soul. This is a free plus 3 to soul if you hit all of the cards, or all of the right grades. It's pretty fantastic. This is also great against um, Retire or other uh, control based decks where they lock it or whatever and stuff like that. Since turn one, if you know that it's going to be retired early or the possibility is there, just put it right back in the soul and you get this and potentially three other cards. It's just really nice in utility. Um, then for trigger lineup, we've got four of the Silverthorn crits, four of the Poison Juggler, which uh, when put into soul, um, you can give something plus 3,000. And then two of the Dynamite Juggler, so 10 crits total. Um, I just kind of like the aggressiveness of 10 crits. It is very viable to run uh, 4 draw and just 8 crits, but I just kind of think that the higher chances of them dealing extra damage on top of their attack extension early game if they can pull it off is just really beneficial to them. But I do notice sometimes if you can't get those attack extension turns off, you could really use the draw triggers or the extra ones in there. So of course two Silverthorn uh, draw triggers and then four of the heal triggers for Silverthorn. And that's the zero lineup. For twos, or for ones, sorry, uh, we've got four of the Silverthorn hypnotists, or Hypnoslidia, so that perfect guard that's pretty basic, uh, you want to use them, they don't even have their G perfect guard yet, so don't have many choices. Then for Zelma, uh, Silverthorn assistant, she is pretty much recommended to at least run it at three, but you probably want to run four just to increase your chances of hitting at least one or two of her in um, your soul. since. When she is called from soul, you choose one other of your Silverthorn rearguards, and then you put it into soul, choose another Silverthorn rearguard, and pull it back out of soul. This means that she can put another Silverthorn or a Zoma that was on field back into soul to bring something else out in case you use more than one. The only thing is she cannot bring herself back out to constantly like uh, use her over and over again. So. Like, put her back in here, bring this out, put this one back in. That's not... You can't call herself back out. But this is great for making entire columns um, with one card called Out of Soul. The card you use with that is Silverthorn uh, Beast Tamer Anna. I run three. She's um, viable enough to be run at four, but there's a lot of decent cards that you would consider running, so... I just leave her at 3. Uh, her skill is when she boosts uh, Pale Moon and it hits, you can counter boss 1, choose a card from Soul and call it out, and then at the end of turn it goes, the card called out goes back to Soul. So you use this to add pressure behind Vanguard, especially uh, be, just on boosters, on rear guards, um, that you can pair up with some of the higher attacking ones like the uh, I believe Upright Line, that can hit really large numbers and force uh, no guards out of them. It's just decent attack extension. Right now I'm running two Silverthorn Assistant Irna. She's a really good card, but she's a bit iffy sometimes. Uh, she checks top two cards of deck when she's called to Vanguard or Rearguard, or placed on Vanguard or Rearguard. You choose one silver thorn from among them, put it in soul, the other one goes bottom of deck. Or any non 
cards put into Soul Glow to bottom deck in any order. She is a potentially good card that lets you selectively Soul Charge, but she gives me a lot of triggers often, so I kind of don't like... I'm considering dropping her for uh, two more copies of this, which is just the basic archetype 10k attacker. Considering how aggressive the deck is, being able to like ride this on turn one and then hit a Marichka or a Anna to bring this back out and swing for 10 early game is pretty useful. That's the grade ones. Moving on to twos, we've got Rising Dragon, which is just a 12k archetype attacker. It's just a 12k attacker with pretty much any grade three and almost every single unit in this deck besides like triggers which you're not going to be having on vanguard anyway um it's just makes it easy where if you need to bring one thing out using Anna or Marichka this will hit unless they hit triggers or the cross ridden but not often does that really happen in the current meta I run three of the upright lines um, these are kind of like a rearguard version of uh, regular Lukier for Silverthorns. Uh, while this on rearguard, when a Silverthorn is called from uh, rearguard from Soul, or when it's yes, when it's placed on rearguard from Soul, uh, it gets plus three thousand. So you call three units, it gets plus nine, and it can pretty much stack with a lot of the other skills. So Zelmas can make these guys hit really hard. And then for Marichka, just because she's a pressure unit, she's a grade 2 version of Anna. So on hit uh, to Vanguard with this unit, uh, kind of boss 1, choose card from Soul, bring it out, um, then put it back into Soul at the end of turn. I don't remember if I mentioned it, but the Annas also need to uh, hit Vanguard, uh, just in case I didn't mention that. But uh, yeah, it's just a good pressure play. What you pretty much want to be doing is you have like grade 2 here, grade 1 here, um, and a Zelma in Soul. The ideal plays usually are having a rested rear guard column here. So let's say you attacked with this, then you attack with this, and it hits. So you counter blast 1, you bring the Zoma, well, you attack with this, bring the Zoma out here, you put this back into soul, bring this back out standing, and now you've got a full 16 lane to attack again with. It's just a nice way to do stuff. Even if you have the rear guard here and you swing for 16, uh, sometimes it's worth minusing by calling the Zoma over the rested uh, grade 1 just to bring the extra grade 2 out so you hit hard. It's not always recommended, but sometimes it's pretty worth it. Lastly, we've got grade 3 lineup, which runs two of the regular Lukier. Um, it's a different sleeve since I'm borrowing my friends, uh, since I have the cards, but they're not with me right now, and we're on, going on a trip soon, so. Uh, it's just really, really useful overall, uh, just because it's cross-ride. And you only need two because you can search out uh, and so charge pretty easy in this deck. Um, it's just a good card if you have to ride it uh, because it gets plus three when things get called out of soul, and its uh, limb break skill isn't terrible. Uh, it's counter boss three, then you choose up to a grade zero, grade one, grade two, and grade three from soul, and call them to regard. Uh, that's pretty much it about this one. It's mostly just in there for the uh, cross ride then I run three of the Venus Lukier which is gonna probably be your go-to unit since it pluses your field for counter blast 2 which is cheaper than the other one so this one is you counter blast two silver thorns yeah so you counter blast two silver thorns you soul charge two units and then you choose uh, any amount of rear guards up to five um, that have grade th that have um, grades that add up to six, yeah. So you can have like a two, two, 
1, 1, and a 0 or something or any other variant of that as long as it adds up to 6 or less. Um, it just pluses your field and it's a cross ride. It's useful. Then lastly we have uh, these which are the uh, Reaver Luke Reverse. Uh, this one skill is kind of boss one, lock a pale moon rear guard. Um, then you choose a card from soul, call it to rear guard, and it gets plus five for the turn. So this is a plus one for counter boss one, but you kind of lose pressure with the rear guard, but you get the plus five on the thing you called out anyway, so it's usually not that bad. It's kind of my backup option in most cases but it can be used to use up that extra one random counter blast that you happen to miss uh, out on using or whatever it is lastly we have the new uh, stride deck which they finally have uh, right now I'm running four of Clifford uh, his skill is on hit um, or on hit on Vanguard you choose a grade two or less card from your soul called to rear guard and that unit gets plus two for end of turn, so he can attack a stand kind of like the Anor Magica plays. I don't usually find myself going into this card very often. I only use him if I'm that early game and I want to try attack extending more than uh, just having a more consistent setup on my field or to fix my field if it has somewhat awkward stuff. I would also probably be running him at like maybe two, maybe three and swapping up other other things but i'm missing the one or two more of the luke here stride so for now i'm running that uh i run two of the luke here stride uh, luke here uh, or mystique luke here which uh you stride and has an act where once per turn you choose two of your rear guards and you put them into soul as um and if you have a Lukier heart, then you soul charge two, you choose two rear guards with silver thorn in soul and bring them out. So you can do stuff where you call out your uh, regular Lukier um, and some other card, activate, put those two into soul. Now you're cross ridden when you go back to your other skill and then you bring other stuff out instead. Um, if not, it's just you get extra soul charge to look for units you want and uh, try to make larger numbers and stuff. If you bring out like a s upright lion and a Zelma, so it's just your basic play uh, in most cases with the rest of the extra deck or with the rest of your stuff. I run one Madu just in case I happen to be stuck on uh, the regular Luke here since she's a 10. So this one is if um, the card, one of the cards in your hearts is 10,000 power or lower, you can choose a grade three from your drop zone and add back to your hand. So it's really useful. Uh, in that situation, it's useful just because you can essentially stride every turn without worry, since you can keep adding it back to hand. Um, it's that's really all it's used for. It's just an in case option where if I can do that, then I can. If not, I don't really care too much. And it can also be used in case I use all my strides somehow magically with Liza. Counter boss one, uh, flip another G unit face up, and for each flipped over, plus five thousand to the vanguard. So it it can end games potentially, but usually we don't get to this point in this deck because we don't have the stride fodder units to stride that much so normally we don't get to do that but he's there just in case you happen to want to try pushing or something earlier than that uh, that's the whole deck uh if you guys wanted to ask questions about it or other stuff like that let us know in the comments uh that should be everything for this one see you guys in the next video